One way to synthesize alcohols is by mixing organometallic reagents or metal hydrides with carbonyl compounds. This way we can produce methyl primary, secondary and tertiary alcohol molecules. Now notice as we mentioned in the previous lecture, when we mix our organometallic reagents such as the Grignard reagent in the presence of our organic halide, we do not form any, any product. So no reaction actually takes place. And this is because this Grignard reagent is not a good enough nucleophile to attack this carbon on the R group displacing this leaving group here. However, if we place that same Grignard reagent as, as shown in reaction number two in the presence of the more reactive carbonyl molecule that contains the reactive double bond between the carbon and oxygen, in this case, this Grignard reagent is a strong enough nucleophile to basically undergo our nucleophilic addition reaction of the carbonyl molecule. So basically, in a two-step mechanism, as we'll see in just a moment, this R group basically attacks this carbon, and a second step, the oxygen is protonated to produce this alcohol compound. Now, depending on these R groups, we can either form a primary, secondary, or a tertiary alcohol. So basically, if these two groups are H atoms, we form a primary alcohol. If one of these is H, the other one is a hydrocarbon, we form a secondary. And if both are hydrocarbons, we form a tertiary. And the same exact thing is true if we, instead of using this Grignard reagent, we use our organo uh, lithium reagent. So by mixing organolithium with either our aldehyde, formaldehyde, or ketone, we can produce a primary, secondary, or a tertiary alcohol. Now, what about methyl alcohols? How can we form an alcohol that contains a carbon that has three H atoms. Well, one way we can do it is by mixing, for example, a formaldehyde with our lithium aluminum hydride, our metal hydride. So metal hydrides, just like organometallic hydrides, can be mixed with carbonyl molecules to produce our alcohol compounds. But in this case, we cannot ever produce our tertiary alcohols. And that's because at least one of these groups has to be an H group that comes from this metal hydride. So in this reaction, in reaction 4, we only produce methyl primary and secondary. In reactions 2 and 3, we produce primary, secondary, and tertiary, and we never produce methyl alcohols. And this reaction doesn't take place because this bond isn't very reactive, and this nucleophile is not very strong to basically displace this leaving group. Group. So only reaction two, three, and four can actually take place. Now, what exactly is the reaction mechanism by which we synthesize our alcohol products by mixing carbonyl molecules with our organometallic reagents and our metal hydride? So, it's basically a two-step mechanism. And the important part about this mechanism is that these two steps have to be separated from one another and we'll see why in just a moment. So let's examine step one and let's suppose we are looking at the Grignard reagent. So the Grignard reagent is basically resin stabilized between these two structures. Now if we take the Grignard reagent and mix it with our carbonyl molecule, let's say our ketone, this acts as a nucleophile and attacks this relatively reactive position. So this attacks this carbon, displacing the pi bond, placing it onto this electronegative oxygen, which now bears a negative charge. So this is step one. The step one or step one includes the nucleophilic addition reaction of our R group to our carbon of the carbonyl. Now the second step, which is separated from step one, is the addition of water. So why should we add water? 
Well, if we add water, this alkoxide ion that is produced in step one can now grab an H atom. It acts as a Lewis base, grabs the H atom from water, which acts as the Lewis acid. And this alkoxide ion, the oxygen, is protonated and we form the final alcohol product as well as this hydroxide. Now, why is it important to separate step one from step two. Well, recall in our discussion of organometallic reagents, such as the Grignard reagent, the Grignard reagent has to be mixed in in the ether solvent. We cannot have water mixed in with the Grignard reagent because water destroys this reagent. So basically, before we add water, we have to allow this reaction to actually take place. And once we form enough product and once equilibrium is achieved, then we could mix in our water because now we no longer have any of this reagent left over and so the water now reacts with this alkoxide to form our alcohol product. So, once again, the second step involves the addition of water to the alkoxide ion and the water protonates the oxygen on the alkoxide to form our alcohol. Now note that these two steps must be separate from one another because organometallic reagents are destroyed in the presence of water. And the way we symbolize the separation of step one from step two is by using the following symbolism. So we have our ketone, well actually it could be a carbonyl molecule, it could be formaldehyde, aldehyde or ketone. We place this in the presence of step one where we add the organometallic reagent agent in the presence of our solvent, uh, let's say ether. And the second step, step number two involves the addition of water. So this one and two are important because they symbolize the separation of these steps. And so after these two steps take place via the following reaction mechanism, we form our final product, the alcohol. And once again, depending on the type of groups that we have, we can either form the primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol or the methyl primary and secondary alcohol product.